the Weimar era was a period in German history that lasted less than 15 years. From the end of World War I, when Kaiser Wilhelm II abdicated in November of 1918, and it ended really in 1933 when Hitler dissolved the Republic and proclaimed himself the dictator, really, of Germany. After the war, Germany was in chaos. A million troops were coming home. There was very little food. There was very little fuel. There was unemployment because they had all been soldiers. The older generation lamented the good old days of the Kaiser. For the younger generation, they believe that we have to start over. Equality, women's rights, the problem of the rich getting richer and the poor getting poorer, and they tried to create art that would reflect values, that would critique that situation. It's very difficult to comprehend what happened between 1918 and 33. The explosion of going in different directions in any art form, literature, paintings, architecture. If you just look at classical music, there was Richard Strauss who believed in transformation. Then you had Stravinsky who just had written the most outrageous piece of music of that time, The Rite of Spring. Then you have Schoenberg who says we have to find a new order. So the 12 tone music came about with Alban Berg and Anton Webern. And then you had Neue Sachlichkeit, a new way of looking matter of fact. Hindemith was one of these people. You have the labor movement. We have to write for the common man. The world had broken down and now we are moving in all sorts of different directions. It's such a thrilling time because you've got experimentation in art, identity, politics and music just bubbling and crashing against each other. You know, there's an idealism about changing the world, which maybe one can only have when everything has been destroyed. I think that feeds into an ability in oneself to be a shapeshifter. The women of Weimar, like that period, they are absolutely diverse. Play with gender, play with identity. In the heightened form, there's more space for the real. And there's just a necessity of survival. Their elders are still hanging on to the old regime, or dead, wounded, shell-shocked, drug addicted. So part of it is play and part of it is survival, I think. To me, cabaret is revolution in a song, I guess, specific enough to shoot people in the heart and activate the brain. The potency of incredible mixture of music and text. I want that feeling of pulsating possibility. And to do that with songs that are 100 years old is why they're amazing songs. I call James Reese Europe one of the big bangs of jazz. And the sounds made it around the world. In the early 1900s, when he arrives in New York, the black musician is simply a minstrel. And he jumps out of it and forms the Clef Club, and they became a hit. So he's the band that's now getting the city to start to put the music into their bodies. World War I happens, and James Reese Europe signs up. The music that they're playing of the time is, is kind of like military band music, but now he's adding all this syncopation to it. When they arrive in France, they're playing in every town that they visit for the people who also they're trying to help liberate. So we are hearing a sound of liberation. Those soldiers who were fighting for Germany were also hearing this music too. And I'd say that when Kurt Weill also hears these songs, he knows this is the way we can tell the story of the people, not necessarily up there on the hill, but the people down here in the hood. Kurt Weill was a German composer, born in 1900. He didn't believe in art for art's sake, but rather for art that served a community. And he was interested in American everything especially American music, American jazz. And it was his way out of nationalism and romanticism to use jazz as a new international folk music. And he just wrote these amazing, catchy, melodic tunes, but then he set them to Bertolt Brecht's text that was caustic and political. 
Blada Lenya was in the Vile Brex shows. Her voice, because it wasn't studied or trained, it was absolutely natural. It's that naturalness, matter-of-factness that was the core of this new aesthetic of Weimar. The Weimar Republic, it's actually just before the lights of democracy went out and led to the success of the terrible populists offering people easy solutions in a very complex time. In 1927-28, there were premieres of 60 new operas in German opera houses. And what happens? 1929, stock market crash depression worldwide. Hitler and the Nazis were allowed to run for office and by 1933 he is appointed chancellor. And that's the end of the Weimar Republic. Two months later, he proclaims himself Fuhrer. It was a huge leap forward and then terrible crackdowns. Jazz later becomes labeled degenerate and syncopation is made illegal. MCs forbidden because too much political commentary could happen on stage in a cabaret. 100 years after the Weimar Republic, there's a lot to be learned from that time, especially as we have seen in the last couple of years how fragile democracy can be. I think it's important to show people in the Weimar Republic Festival that complexity is one of the ingredients of music and we shouldn't shy away from it.